Hey, how's it going everyone? It's me, it's Kunjinsula. I hope you're having a good day and welcome to today's Pokemon Go video. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about a bunch of controversies that Niantic has been catching as of late. And I really do think that these are some very concerning things regarding Pokemon Go. Specifically, I wanted to talk about what a lot of people pointed out in my last video in the comment section regarding Sustainability Week and why it is considered a very lame event. Now, I wanted to address this first because, yeah, I made a video that was very positive towards this event, and that's mainly because when I looked at it from a surface level, it did seem like a really decent event, mainly because of the Stardust as well as the Buddy Adventure bonuses. That's actually because my playstyle in Pokemon Go is all about Buddy Adventure as of late. Like, that's basically been my biggest focus when it comes to Pokemon Go. It hasn't really been about raiding, it hasn't been about PvP. I really do care a lot about the Buddy Adventure system, so from my point of view, I thought it was a very solid event. But it seemed like the community was totally in disagreement. It seems like everyone is just very disappointed by this event, and I can understand that, and I do agree with a lot of that disappointment. This event did have a lot of potential to be something really good, but essentially it is kind of a lame event that's not featuring anything new. So because of that, I wanted to say that, yeah, I agree with a lot of the criticisms, and because my point of view towards Pokemon Go is very different from a vast majority of players, I want you all to understand that, yeah, something might seem a lot more fun compared to others, but, you know, that's just because I play the game a very specific way. But that doesn't mean any of your criticisms are invalid. I totally understand and agree with a lot of those criticisms. Now, let's move on to some more recent controversies regarding Pokemon Go. This is in regards to the Avatar system that they just updated. Yeah, this has been a major topic of conversation ever since they implemented it, and... My god, what a disaster. Like, the Avatar system was meant to be something really cool, something that was a long time coming, and to a degree, I did like a lot of the features. There was a lot of cool stuff that they implemented. The only problem is that the execution of these new features was very bad. <laughs> Every single character was meant to look very unique. Every single character is supposed to be their own kind of flavor, but what they ended up doing is creating just an abomination of, uh, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It seems like everyone has the face of a baby. It's very uncanny and it does not look good. A lot of people have pointed out that there's also been a lot of issues and glitches with the new avatar system and people are finding that some of the poses that they purchased in the past or some of the poses that they've earned from playing PvP and completing some special research tasks, they were not even obtainable. Like, you cannot even use them with the new avatar system. And then a lot of pieces of clothing were disappearing and there was just a lot of weird things happening with your character. Like, it's just an unmitigated mess. And I really feel like this is something that should have been cooking in the kitchen a lot longer before it was released to the public because right now it is just in a bare bones state. Like, it's not doing really well. A lot of people are looking at it and kind of comparing it to the route system when that first came out. And I can totally understand that because the route system was not a complete feature when it first was released and a lot of people are thinking that when it comes to Niantic they are constantly releasing new features not bug free not fully developed and I think that is a major problem the avatar system was meant to be something really exciting it was a new way for players to customize the look of their avatars and unfortunately because of how much they botched the release of this update it's something that's going to be a stain in the Pokemon Go community. A lot of people are going to look at this and just see it as another reason why Niantic just constantly fumbles the ball when it comes to Pokemon Go's development. And yeah, that's not a good reputation to have because anytime they release a new feature, there's just always going to be this sense of doubt within the Pokemon Go community. Niantic really needs to make sure these features are polished up and in a releasable state before they release it. I really do think that if for the next couple of updates that are supposedly coming to Pokemon Go, I have a lot of concern. Like, there's a lot of visual updates to the map as well as the catch screen that are supposedly coming. A lot of people that have already received those as part of like a testing group, I've been saying how buggy they are. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned with the direction of Pokemon Go. Niantic, if you happen to be watching this, I just want you to know that I do like these updates. I do think they're going to be really good for the game but they need to be polished up. They need to be in a state where they're not going to be ridiculed, they're not going to be seen in a negative light. 
they just need to be polished up. They need to be bug free and they need to make sure that they're doing their job. Like the avatar customization was meant to be something really cool, but it's become kind of a laughing stock because of just how poor the art looks and that can't be okay. But moving on, this is not necessarily a controversy, but some people are pointing out some negatives with it. There's going to be a Cleffa hatch day that's coming in Pokemon Go. And a lot of players are finding this to be exciting news, but there's also players out there who are very concerned, and I'll get more into that later. But first, let's talk about the details for this event. The Cleffa Hatch Day is going to be on Sunday, April 28th from 2 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. local time, and it's going to be all about hatching eggs for Cleffa. During this event, you're going to get two times the amount of candy from hatching eggs, and you'll also have an increased chance of hatching shiny Cleffa. You'll also get two kilometer eggs more often when you spin Pokestops. Now, there's also going to be a free timed research, which is going to award you a super incubator as well as experience. Something to keep in mind is that this timed research is going to expire after Sunday, April 28th at 5 o'clock p.m. local time. So you will want to log in during the event hours in order to get this timed research, and you will want to complete it before 5 o'clock p.m. Now, there's also going to be a paid timed research ticket that's going to be $1 USD, and you're gonna get a two times hatch Stardust bonus when you purchase it. Now, this is where Niantic is catching a lot of controversy. A lot of people are pointing out that this double hatch Stardust bonus was actually just a part of the event back when we had Riolu Hatch Day. And this time around, it looks like you have to pay for it. A lot of people do not like the fact that certain bonuses that were originally included are now something that you have to pay for. And I agree with that criticism. I don't think this is ever okay when it comes to game design. Like, if you're going to be designing these events, there needs to be some level of consistency, and you shouldn't be locking certain things behind a paywall that was free before. Something like that is never going to go over well when it comes to a game community, and it's something Niantic should have been aware of. Now, during this event, there's also going to be extended bonuses, which are going to start on Friday, April 26th at 10 o'clock a.m., and it's going to go until the end of the event at April 28th at 5 o'clock p.m. The event bonuses are going to include a half egg hatch distance when eggs are placed in incubators during this time. You're also going to get field research tasks, which are going to award you with stardust and experience. There's also going to be a couple of bundles in the Pokeshop as well as the web store, and personally speaking, I do not think these bundles are worth it. It's going to cost you $19.99 USD for a bundle that's going to include a bunch of super incubators as well as regular incubators, and I feel like for the amount of Poke coins that you could purchase for $19 USD, you could end up with more incubators. So I really do not think this is worth it, but if you really want to go all out during this event and you need incubators, then it might be worth buying considering that Niantic may not necessarily put any bundles in the Pokeshop that's going to include incubators because I wouldn't put it past them to do something like that. But yeah, in any case, that's going to be it for this video. Now, I would love to know your thoughts regarding everything that I talked about down below. Are you disappointed with the avatar updates that they implemented recently? Are you very unhappy about sustainability week? And what are your thoughts regarding Cleffa Hatch Day? Share all of those opinions down below and let's have a great discussion. And thank you so much for making it to this point in the video. If you ended up enjoying it and found it to be insightful, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And also don't forget that little bell so you can stay up to date on whenever I upload videos. Now I wanna give a quick shout out to every single patron on my Patreon. You make this channel content possible. If you wanna support the content slow channel, the absolute best way to do so is by becoming a paid Patreon member. If you do so, you will get a permanent spot on my in-game Pokemon Go friends list. So when it comes to remote raids and the friendship system, if you want to interact with me, then do consider joining my Patreon. And if you want to support my channel in a different way, you can do so by following me on social media. My handle is at Conchinsula, and I'm on the platforms that you see on screen. Make sure you go over there and give me a follow. All right, and that's going to be it. I'm Conchinsula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.